I always seem to get in trouble with people. I don't know what happens to me. Uh, I was in traffic once, and a guy behind me lost his mind. That ever happened to you? The guy behind you in traffic just decides that you're the problem. It's you. I don't know what happened. I was sitting in this car, and there's just there's 50 cars ahead of me before any light. And the guy behind me just starts beep, 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 beep. I look at him, and he's honking just at me. He's amazed that I'm not going. He's going, go, Jesus! Me, just go! Screaming out his window at me. Like I'm driving all 50 cars there, you know? I'm pushing them like shopping carts in a parking lot. What does he think? He keeps yelling, go! And I, I'm trying to do that thing. What? I can't. What do you want? What do you want? Why are you... But it just made him matter. He was like, oh, he was like purple and crazy. And I'm laughing at him, you know, till he gets out of his car. He's one of these guys, gets out of his car, comes up to my car, starts screaming at me, move it! Move it! And what am I gonna, what am I gonna say back? What's gonna be my argument that's gonna make him see clearly, you know? Well, I can't because of all the cars. I'm not able to get through the cars because they're solid. They're made of solid material. You know what I mean? And he's going to go, oh, yeah, I, oh, no, I didn't know they were solid. That's right. Yeah, you can't drive through the cars. Right, I'll just go back to my car and wait. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. But he kept yelling at me. So I just decided, you know what? I'm going to argue with this guy. I'll argue with him. But I'm going to argue about something else. I'm not going to have his argument. I'm going to have mine. So he goes, move it! And I go, well, give me back my jacket! <laughs> and he stopped. And I was like, yeah, you got my jacket. Give it back! Now! I want it! He got scared. Got back in his car and he locked his doors. So, you know, that's what I do from now on. People from other countries eat weird food, man. I was in Chinatown and, uh, you know where the groceries... I know that's not another country, but, uh, you know... <laughs> you, you know when you, the grocery stores in Chinatown, they're for the Chinese people to eat their actual food and, uh... They had, I was in one of those and they, they had duck vaginas. I swear to God, a huge barrel of fucking duck vaginas with a scoop stuck in it. And I'm standing there just staring at this fucking huge thing. And I'm thinking, could we possibly dominate a species more than that? Than that we're selling their vaginas in a fucking barrel? Fucking ducks are just like, dudes, Jesus. We, you won the war. Take it easy. You don't have to sell our vaginas. I didn't get any because I don't want to know if I, what if I love duck vaginas? I don't want to find out. It's not like millions of things taste like a fucking duck vagina. It would be very specific to be addicted to that. Not for me. I was once on Venice Beach and I'm jogging and there's this guy rollerblading towards me and he's, he's got rollerblades on and just a thong, just a fucking thong that's just grabbing his dick and balls and just fighting with it going, eh, stay in there. And, and then he's just totally naked otherwise and he's got this Kenny G hair and he's just rollerblading like... I actually had to stop jogging because I needed my whole body to fucking hate this guy with. I had to just stand there and go, oh, you motherfucker. Now I have to know you exist, you piece of shit. Fucking go skate into an AIDS tree, you motherfucker. All right, now. All right. Thank you. All right, faggot, how you doing? 
sorry. I called him a faggot. Um, I miss that word, you know? I, I grew up saying that word, and it, I mean, it, it never meant gay. When I was a kid, I didn't, I didn't know what gay was. No, I hadn't been told that people do that. I had no fucking idea. <laughs> faggot didn't mean gay. When I was a kid, you called somebody faggot because they're being a faggot, you know? <laughs> Being a faggot, me. Shut up, faggot. <laughs> Man's supposed to use those for that. Shut up, faggot. <laughs> Didn't mean like I would never call a gay guy a faggot unless he's being a faggot. <laughs> but not because he's gay. You understand? Like if I saw two guys blowing each other, and I don't know why I'm watching them do it, but if I just had them. <laughs> stumbled upon a couple of fellas <laughs> blowing one another on their respective penisia. It's a plural for penis that I invented today. Penisia. I would be respectful to them. I would, you know, hello, gentlemen, whatever, you know. But if one of them took the dick out of his mouth and started acting all faggy and saying annoying faggy things, you know, people from Phoenix are Phoenicians or something like that. I'd be like, hey, shut up, faggot. Faggot! Quit being a faggot and suck that dick. That's what I would say to him. I don't know. I would never call somebody a mean name because they're sucking a dick. Because if you can suck a dick, man, that's awesome. I respect you because I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I mean, I haven't tried and failed. I just have put myself there in my mind and I couldn't do it because I'm afraid. That's the only reason. But that's why if you can suck a dick, I think that, that there's a strength in being able to do that. I believe that. I don't believe that blowing somebody comes easily to anybody. Even if it's something that you generally do, every new dick must take something out of you. There must be something you got to do to get yourself ready, you know. <clears throat> okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, suck you. Okay. Here we go! <laughs> so, faggot. I don't know. A lot of words that are... They're not bad words. No words are bad. But some people start using them a lot to hurt other people. And then they become bad. They become hard to use. There's words that I love that I can't use because other people use them wrong to hurt other people. Like, the word cunt is a beautiful word. To me, there's just beauty in that word. And I don't... I mean aesthetically. It's, it has, it's like chocolatey and round on the ends. I just like the, I just like the way it sounds. And I don't use it as an insult. I, I, I'm alone in the laundry. I'm like, cunt, cunt. I just like saying it. I would never call a woman a cunt, except for my mom, because she likes us for some weird reason. But it's a very misused word. It's supposed to mean vagina, which I don't think works at all, because. Vaginas are so sweet. They're little pretty things with little flower petally lips. And I hear a piccolo in my head every time I see a vagina. <laughs> Even vaginas too harsh for they should be called like a. There should be a butterfly fluttering around every vagina all the time. Just all the time. A little butterfly. And you go to the doctor, he's like, well, the butterfly looks good, so we're in good shape. Good color to the butterfly. How do you look at something that pretty and say, that's a cunt? That doesn't fit at all. Maybe if it was a giant vagina and it was attacking a town and throwing buses around and knocking over telephone poles. Then you can say, hey, somebody shoot that cunt with a bazooka. He's <laughs> gonna step on the candy store. <laughs> so, 
ragged cunt. Every, everybody has different words that offend them, different things that they hear that they get offended by. I, to me, the thing that offends me the most is every time that I hear the N-word. Not nigger, by the way. I mean, the N-word. Literally, whenever a white lady on CNN with nice hair says the N-word, that's just white people getting away with saying nigger. That's all that is. They found a way to say nigger. N-word. It's bullshit, because when you say the N-word, you put the word nigger in the listener's head. That's what saying a word is. You say the N-word and I go, oh, she means nigger. You're making me say it in my head. Why don't you fucking say it instead and take responsibility? What the shitty words you want to say? Just say it. Don't hide behind the first letter like a faggot. Just say nigger, you stupid cunt. <laughs> Sorry I'm being so negative. It's, I'm a bummer, I don't know. I, I shouldn't be, I'm a very, uh, you know, lucky guy. I got a lot going for me. I'm, I'm healthy, I'm relatively young, I'm white, which thank God for that shit, boy. That is a huge leg up, are you kidding me? Oh God, I love being white, I really do. Seriously, if you're not white, you're missing out because this shit is thoroughly good. It, and, but let me be clear, by the way, I'm not saying that white people are better. I'm saying that being white is clearly better. Who could even argue? <laughs> if it was an option, I would re-up every year. Oh yeah, I'll take white again, absolutely. I've been enjoying that. I'm gonna stick with white, thank you. Here's how great it is to be white. I could get in a time machine and go to any time and it would be fucking awesome when I get there. <laughs> exclusively a white privilege. Black people can't fuck with time machines. A black guy in a time machine is like, hey, anything before 1980, no thank you, I don't want to go. But I can go to any time. The year two? I don't even know what was happening then. But I know when I get there, welcome, we have a table right here for you, sir. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely here in the year two. I can go to any time in the past. I don't want to go to the future and find out what happens to white people because we're going to pay hard for this shit. You got to know that. We're not going to just fall from number one to two. They're going to hold us down and fuck us in the ass forever. And we totally deserve it. But for now, we. Now, if you're, if you're white and you don't admit that it's great, you're an asshole. It is great. And I'm a man. How many advantages could one person have? I'm a white man. You, you can't even hurt my feelings. What can you really call a white man that really digs deep? Hey, cracker. Oh, ruined my day. Boy, shouldn't have called me a cracker. Bringing me back to owning land and people. What a drag. My own kids, I love my kids, but sometimes when they complain, I get really pissed off. My kids complain, I'm like, you know what, I love you, honey, but fuck you a little bit, because... You have an amazing life. I gave my daughter Benadryl the other day because she had a rash and, and, and it was bubblegum flavored. And she's like, ew, fuck you, ew, what are you, nuts? It's medicine! Most kids don't have medicine. When they get sick, they die on a rock with a bear eating them. <laughs> oh, he's got a sniffle. Ring the bear bell and put him outside. Ew. You're fucking a white girl eating bubblegum medicine, wearing clothes made by children your age professionally. And I don't mean to say that if you're white, you have no right to complain. I just mean that if you're black, you have more right to complain. White people wish that black people would just forget everything that ever happened to anybody. 
We're so impatient. Come on! Every year, white people add 100 years to how long ago slavery was. I've heard educated white people say, slavery was 400 years ago. No, it wasn't. Are you crazy? It was 130 years ago. And it's not like it ended and then everything has been amazing for black people. Slavery, and then it just ended like a clean shit where you don't have to wipe. Just a perfect ending. And then it's just been parades and blowjobs and presents for every black person every second since slavery ended. If you meet a black person with gray hair, they remember a time where they legally weren't allowed to use certain water fountains. So give them a second. And by the way, white people, we have the same thing. You know, We have things that happen to us that we're still coping with. Like when they took our slaves away. That was really hard for us because we really liked having slaves and now we're sad. So pretty much on balance. But, hope my children have a good life. Sometimes you meet racist people too. You know what's funny to me? When you meet someone who's racist and they have an excuse. I met this guy once very racist. I don't know where he's from, but I asked his friend, why is he like that? And his friend goes, ah, well he was born on a farm. <laughs> What kind of farm was that? How do you get... Maybe the animals were racist. Maybe the animals on the farm were racist. They're like, Jews. Jews. Blacks. Blacks. Jews. Blacks. Mexicans. Wow. It's a pretty racist farm. You know what, too? Every time you hear a racial stereotype, it's always negative. It's always something shitty. Why can't we have racial stereotypes that are nice? You could say things about races that are ignorant, but pleasant. You know? You're like, yeah, you know those Chinese people. They're made of candy. You know? <laughs> and whenever you see, like, public service announcements on television that are like, don't be racist or whatever. They're always shitty. They're always badly made, you know? But then you watch like a, uh, like a commercial for like Mountain Dew and there's a fucking cheetah stealing a guy's fucking soda. <laughs> they should have like PSAs that are really great, you know, like young people at a bar and there's music, you know, fucking shitty rock and roll and they're drinking and some kid goes like, a, like, dude, don't hate the Jews or something like that, you know? Like, the other guy's like, why not? Cuts, just don't hate the Jews. <laughs> Why not? Like a girl walks in with big tits and it says, don't hate the Jews on her shirt. He's like, that's why, yeah! <laughs> don't hate the Jews. <laughs> People would not hate Jews. Because they want to be like them kids. So I was watching uh, Schindler's List today. Hey, you wanted me back, man. This is what I got. I was... I was watching Schindler's List. It's funny because Schindler's List, when it came out, was this moment, you know? It was a document and everybody talked about it. Now it's just on. It's just on TBS. And you can just flip on by, yeah, the Jews, and all that, okay. And then uh, you just you, you flip this way and you see Dudley Moore and Kirk Cameron switch bodies. And that way it's Hitler and the Jews and all that. It's just... I was watching Schindler's List and there was a scene that really, I, I, I forgot about this scene and there I saw it. There's a scene where all the Jews are being let out of Warsaw, they're being forced out of Warsaw, they got all their belongings on this road and all the people that aren't Jews are watching them leave in nice clothing, it's this horrible. And there's a little girl in this scene and she's standing on a mailbox, she's about eight years old and she's in a pretty dress, you remember this scene, and she's, and she's watching them, she's going, goodbye Jews! Goodbye, Jews! And this really struck me, and probably the Jews too, that it happened to, because 
I think it must be real. There must have been that girl. And when they researched the movie, somebody told Spielberg that story. And he was like, we're fucking doing that. That's amazing. And because I know how movies were made, I know that they had to go and find an eight-year-old girl who could nail that shit. So somewhere there's a tape of like 50 little girls. <laughs> trying to get the goodbye Jews part. And they're all cute, of course. They're all little girl actors. There's no little girl actresses that are like, mm, like Sean Penn, I just do my thing, you know, I just, you know. They're going from the Hannah Montana audition to the goodbye Jews. Hi, my name's Dorothy. I'm William Morris. All right, Dorothy, go ahead. Goodbye, Jews. <laughs> Goodbye, Jews. Uh, Dorothy, you're, you're angry at them. Oh, I'm, okay. Goodbye, Jews. <laughs> mm. Goodbye, Jews. Mm. Okay, thank you, Dorothy. Next. Okay, thank you very much. Next. And then comes the girl whose mother prepared her for the... Hi, my name is Angeline. And I'm with CAA, and I'm really happy to meet you. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Angeline, you just need the line. Oh, I'm sorry. Goodbye, Jews! Goodbye, Jews! So I'm driving to Walgreens, it was nighttime, and I'm driving, and then my, I see a deer. And I fucking hate deer. I hate them, because they're everywhere up there. I used to live in the city, and I loved deer then, because I was this liberal in the city, and I'd see deer, and you know, you're driving with your friends out to the country, and you see a deer, and everybody's like, oh my god, turn off, turn off the car, don't, don't scare the deer. It's just so beautiful. But now I live, and deer are in my fucking yard every day, and they suck. They're just rats with hooves. They don't matter. They, they have ticks that give you Lyme disease, and they shit everywhere. And they make a noise. Did you know that? They go, oh, they're assholes. They're shit animals. I go out every morning and throw rocks at them, and I try really hard to hit them in, on the head with rocks. And they don't care, they're like <laughs> They don't care I don't have a gun, but if I did I would shoot a baby deer in the mouth And feel nothing I wouldn't feel anything I just go, oh look, he's dead That's interesting I guess that's what happens when you shoot him in the fucking mouth I go out of my way to kill a deer. I would happily blow 20 guys in an alley with bleedy dicks so I could get AIDS and then fuck a deer and kill it with my AIDS. I would do that in a second. I mean it. I mean it. So I see this deer and this is how dumb these deer. I hit him with the headlights and he does that whole thing. And then he won't just go. He's like, can I, can I go? Is it okay if I go? Like he, and I'm like, fucking go, go. And then they're fucking go. Like, just go. And then I get close, and then I try to kind of get away from him. And then I see him, and he looks at me, and he, ah, he panics. I swear, and he ran and smashed his body into my fucking car. Like, just fucking destroyed my mirror, just shattered my mirror, broke his neck. I heard him break his own fucking neck. And then he just dragged his stupid deer head into the woods, and he died. And I'm glad he's dead. I was glad right away. 
I got out of my car. I did, and I yelled into the woods, I'm glad you're dead, you fucking idiot! I hope your dear wife finds you dead and dies of a broken heart. I hope your dear baby starved to death. You broke my mirror, you faggot, cunt, nigger, deer. My bank called me the other day. I love this. My bank calls and they, and they say, uh, uh, hi, we're calling because you don't have enough money. And I was like, yeah, I know that. I also am of the opinion that I don't have enough money. And she's like, no, you don't understand. See, you have insufficient funds. Well, yeah, that's also a very good way of putting it. I think my funds are grossly insufficient. Thank you for calling. I thought, I thought it was my problem that I'm fucking broke. I thought that was just my own. I thought I was the only one who suffered, but apparently the bank has a serious problem with it. Like somehow it fucks them up that I'm broke. And she said, well, no, you can't have such a low amount of money. It's where we can't tolerate that. I'm like, well, then give me some fucking money. If you feel I don't have enough, then give me some. <laughs> they have some money in the bank. But that's not what they do. They do the opposite. They take your money. If you don't have enough, they charge you money for being broke. They charge me $15 for only having $20. I, if I could have gotten the 20 out, I could fucking have it today. But I didn't get there quick enough. So now I have five. And I don't know if you've ever had $5 in the bank. But I found that you can't get the shit out. You can't get it out. Because there's no fives in any machine anywhere. And it costs a dollar fifty to use it anyway. So and there's certainly not three dollars and fifty cents in any fucking cock sucking machine in any bank. There's no quarters and singles, motherfuckers. Shit dick ball ass. I'm not, I'm not eloquent. I just fuck them. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> but that was the worst. My $5 trapped in there, and I would just go visit it. That's all I could do. But then one day they charged me again for having not enough money. So then I had negative 10. Negative 10. You know what that means? That means I don't even have no money. I don't have that much. I'd love to have nothing, but that's more than I have. I'm not even broke. I'm not that good. I have not 10. That's how much I have. That means I can't even afford to get something that doesn't cost anything. If somebody says to me, you want this? It's free. I gotta go, I can't. I can't afford it. That's beyond my means. And you know what's great is if you have a lot of money, the bank gives you money. They pay you for having money. They say, that's so nice of you to have money. Here, have some more. Here, take this guy's 15. Fuck him. Who does he think he is? <laughs> it's only right that since he has so little, he should have to give most of it to you because you have so much. It makes perfect sense. I love America. I love it here. I, I, it's not what it used to be. It's kind of, it's, you know, we, like me and my wife and kids, we live in upstate New York, and it's one of these areas where we just, we live, we're in a suburb of Walmart, basically, you know. It's just Walmart and Walgreens and Renna Center. Do you know what Renna Center is? Do you know what goes on in a Renna Center? People go to Renna Center to rent like a chair. Or a couch. How shitty is your shitty, shitty, very shitty life that you need to rent a lamp for 40 bucks a month? And then you go broke and you gotta go, honey, they're gonna take the lamp today. Because we didn't pay the lamp rent. 
But it's important to me to do a good job because it's my job. I mean, also, you paid me, and it's all, you paid me. I get a, a money from every ticket, so your money is, is mine now. I own it now. And, and it's going to be gone tomorrow. I'm a piece of shit. I don't save money. If I die tonight, my kids are homeless tomorrow morning. Someone's going to wake them up. Your daddy's dead. Get your shit and get out because I don't save money. I think it's arrogant to save money. You shit it out. Money is like oxygen. It's not my money. It's the money. I could die tomorrow. So fuck it. I spend it. I didn't buy my mom a house. You're supposed to have that musical montage when you get a TV show where you take your mom to the... I didn't do that. I didn't, she's my mom, but she's not me. Why would I buy her a house? <laughs> but, um... And I went to England. I spent a month there. I liked England. Everything's different. I mean, that's, that's obvious, but some of the differences were cool. I like the money. The money, instead of a, a dollar bill, they have the pound coin. And it's a coin, and you throw it on the counter. It felt kind of cool, like the old west. Like going to, you know, being on the dusty trail. You see a saloon, so you walk over with your horse. You throw the rope vaguely at the pole outside. <laughs> thing they do. It's, well, it's my whole life on that horse. Should be fine. Just walk in a saloon. Give me a beer, a bottle of whiskey, and a room for a week, and steak dinner, a shave, and a haircut, and a bath. And some new clothes and a hat and some boots and some oats from a horse and a woman here you go ping that's all one heavy coin you're fine nobody adds up all those things you mentioned they don't check to see what coin it was the guy just keeps drying the glass Things were very vague back then. Things just cost money. Hey, how much is that? Money. <laughs> In the old English movies, it was different. It was a little sack of coins. Remember that little drawstring sack tossed over by some faggy lord with a ruffled shirt? <laughs> Throw it disdainfully down to some commoner who's gonna do something beneath his station. Follow the girl and report back to me at midnight bring a shovel and a sack and two reliable men such as yourself mm -hmm. what's that? oh yes of course well this ought to be sufficient me and just chink well thank you sir the guy's so happy to get a general amount of some kind of currency or another <laughs> he didn't like count it I, I think you only gave me enough for the shovel it's not enough there either. that was a good time in our economy when you needed to have gold to buy shit. We might be going back to that pretty soon, too. <laughs> Things are pretty fucked up. People are a little bit scared. But you know what? How bad could it really get? I mean, most Americans have so much crap. You could lose most of it and still be, have more shit than the average Canadian, even. Like, we're the <laughs> fattest people in the world. And we just have all this shit and we hate it. We're just miserable with our phones. <laughs> just angry all the time. And it, I worry about the economy failing because we don't, we can't even, we're miserable with a great life. Like, I don't know how the fuck we're gonna deal with, like, when you gotta move your mom into the cellar and shit and, like, have, like, serious problems. Because we have, like, up till now, we have white, we have white people problems in America. That's what we have. White people problems. You know what that is? That's where your life is amazing, so you just make shit up to be upset about. People in other countries have real problems, like, oh shit, they're cutting off all our heads today. Things like that. <laughs> Here we make shit up to be upset about, like, how come I have to choose a language on the ATM machine? It's bullshit. <laughs> I shouldn't have to do that. I'm American. God, the shit we bitch about. I called American Airlines and I got a Pakistani lady. And she was in Pakistan. Only people near my fat white body should have jobs. <laughs> uh, 
I'll tell you what, though. When I call American Airlines and I get the Pakistani lady, I hang up and I call again. I do. I'm going to tell you honestly. And it's not because I don't like her, and it's not because she doesn't speak English, because she speaks way better than I do. She's just a better person. It's so clear. And I know, here's why I don't like talking to her, because I know she doesn't give a shit about me and my white people problems. I want to talk to the lady from Texas who's like, well, how can I help you? That's the lady I want. I just know it. Hello, American. Oh, fuck, you don't care. There's no way. Why would you? I'm in my underwear. Hi, I have a layover in Dallas that's really long. And I was wondering if... She's like, oh, really? I haven't had a clean glass of water in 10 years, okay? <laughs> Two of my kids died this morning. I still came to work, you fat shit. I can hear you're fat over the phone. Why don't you hang up and kill yourself? Why would she care? <laughs> oh, he's just, God, standing at the ATM. I can't believe they're making me go like this. <laughs> Stupid. What the fuck are you complaining about? You push a button in and you, money comes out of fucking slots. <laughs> that way when I was younger you had to go in the bank remember that you had to go inside the bank now you look in the bank you're like what are those people doing in there are they cleaning the money's out here I used to like when my phone rang now it's always some idiot calling me AT&T calls me every day hi it's AT&T you're calling if you want to switch to at and t it's good service because you call your friend on the phone and they can be in another part of the area and you call them and you don't have to yell or anything you're just right there so what do you think would you like to switch it only costs some money would you like to switch for the at and and I'm like no I, I already have at and I have it already why are you calling me well it's good you, you want some more because it's good get some more at and it's better than other ones I know I have it Stop fucking calling me! I'll do all the announcements that you would have heard. Uh, please turn off your cell phones. Uh, don't, uh, I, I mean, you can take pictures, but turn off the flash. That's stupid, because it's not, you know, like when you're watching the World Series and there's all, like, that, like your flash is lighting Yankee Stadium. Just leave your flash off. If you have, don't yell out during the show. If you have something you want to say to me, totally, this is what we do, we write it down. And then you go outside in the lobby, and then you go home and you kill yourself. Because that's selfish. This is a rhetorical performance. It's got nothing to do with you. Don't text or Twitter during the show. Just live your life. Don't keep telling people what you're doing. Just, because also, also, it lights up your big dumb face. It lights it up. I see this beautiful sea of darkness within just one guy. <clears throat> so don't do that. Let's talk. I have this friend, uh, he has a phone that can IM, he can instant message, and so now I really want him to die because I'm sick of getting these fucking messages from him on his phone. I, I'm in a shoe store. That's the whole message. We're not secret agents. I don't need to know where you are. So I get this message from him. He says, I'm on an airplane in Seattle. So I wrote back and I said, well, I hope your plane crashes. <laughs> and he gets pissed off and he calls me, take it back, we're about to take off. I'm like, fuck you, I hope it crashes. I don't have to take it back. <laughs> hope it crashes twice. Hope it crashes and kills Happy and they go, fuck it, let's try again. And they take off and crash again. I hope that happens. <laughs> Sincerely, I hope it. And he's, he, he, me, he goes, well, how are you going to feel now if my plane crashes after you went and said that? I'm like, are you shitting me? That would be amazing. <laughs> to know that I can do that? I'd happily trade your life for knowledge of my powers. <laughs> he's one of those guys who just makes you hate him because, uh, you know, when you have a friend that you hate, you can't break up with your friends, you know? He always starts conversations that I don't want to have. You know, he's like, hey, what would you do if you had a time machine? I'm like, fuck you. I don't... You know what? I wouldn't use it. I'd just let it sit in my house. I'd put a drink on it. Yeah, I got a time machine. I never even wanted it. I don't know. I'm not interested. I'd use it to go back 30 minutes ago and punch you in the fucking face before you asked me that.
That's all. One use. So he goes, well, here's what I would do. Because, of course, that's the whole fucking point of asking me is to stare at me while I say mine and then has say his. So he said if he had a time machine, he would kill Hitler. Like, he would go back and kill Hitler. I love that he thinks he could just kill Hitler just because he just goes back there and walk up and kill the dude. And I was thinking, that's a noble purpose for a time machine. I would do it, but I would have gone back then, but I, I wouldn't have killed Hitler. I would have raped him. That's what I thought. Because... I think that would have been enough. I think that would have stopped him from doing all that shit. If he had been raped by me, he never would have pulled any of that stuff, man. Should we invade Poland? No, nah, let's just take a shower. I don't feel good. He would have... Low self-esteem, and you know. But anyway, I'm glad I'm here because of you, and, and I want to do a good show for you. That's my job. That's the simplest thing in the world to me is that you should do your job. You should do it well. And not because of how well you get paid, but because that's your job. I never understand people when I go to a place to get a thing and they do their job shitty out of spite for how shitty their job is. It makes no sense to me. Why, why would you do, why wouldn't you want it? You, why, why do you have to make my coffee sarcastically? I am a Hear your majesty, enjoy your coffee. You know, why? Why wouldn't you want it to be? You know why? Because you're 20, you piece of shit. That's why. Because you're a 20-year-old piece of shit. I'm sorry, but I am prejudiced against everyone who's 20 years old that works at a place. Because... No, they just think that if you just stand there and hate it, somebody will go, oh, well, then let's make you a director. That's how that works. Just if you... Clearly, you're better than this. 20-year-olds are the worst people because that is a person who has been taking and just sucking up and absorbing fucking education and love and products and, and just giving nothing back. They're just, they're ripe like a big, fat, ripe orange on a tree, and the, and the tree's like, what the fuck? Jesus, this is crazy. Whoa, fuck you, I don't want to go. If you're 20, I guarantee you, you never did anything for anybody. F yes, you went to Guatemala on a school trip, and they told you you helped, but you didn't help at all. You were a way bigger pain in the ass than you were any help to those. They're like, I got a mudslide in my house and I got to babysit a fucking college student. Just take a picture of her with a shovel so she can put it on Facebook and leave us alone. I had such an amazing experience. Really, did you take from them too, you motherfucker? My daughter was... Uh was having a dance thing at our school. They had this big dance. Anyway, we all went, all the parents, and everybody's there, and everybody's got their phone. Every single parent. It was an amazing thing to watch, because kids are dancing, and every parent is standing there like this. Every single person was blocking their vision of their actual child <laughs> with their phone. And the kids, I went over by the stage, and the kids, there's people holding iPads in front of their faces. <laughs> It looked like we're all in the witness protection program. Like, the kids can't see their parents. And everybody's watching a shitty movie of something that's happening 10 feet. Like, look at your fucking kid! The, the resolution on the kid is unbelievable. If you just look, it's totally HD. Why are you taping this? You're never gonna watch it. In a million years, you're not gonna watch videos of your kids doing shit you missed the first time it happened. You don't watch it, you just put it on Facebook. Here, you watch it. I wanna take a nap now. And then you get to read all the comments. Oh my God! It's so cute! And guess what? They're not watching it either. They're not watching the video. These kids are dancing for no one. 
Nobody watches the videos on your Facebook. They see the first frame of a kid and they go, ah, that's very nice. Okay, back to this. <laughs> Nobody's watching your kids' videos on Facebook. I promise you. I'll prove it to you. Next time you take your kids dance, take one second of it and then add 20 minutes of just your own asshole. Just go in the bathroom and just record your own anus opening and closing for 20 minutes. Tack it on to your kid dancing for a second, put that on Facebook. Everybody will write the same thing. That's adorable. I think I see a future star. <laughs> you know, you have your bad thoughts. Hopefully you, hopefully you do good things. Everybody has a competition in their brain of good thoughts and bad thoughts. Hopefully they win, you know, the good thoughts win. For me, I always have both. I have like the thing I believe, the good thing. That's the thing I believe. And then there's this thing. And I don't believe it, but it is there. It's always this thing and then this thing. It's become a category in my brain that I call, of course, but maybe. I'll give you an example. Okay, like of course, of course, children who have nut allergies need to be protected. Of course. We have to segregate their food from nuts, have their medication available at all times, and anybody who manufactures or serves food needs to be aware of deadly nut allergies. Of course. But maybe, maybe if touching a nut kills you, you're supposed to die. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Jesus. I have a nephew who has that. I'd be devastated if something happened to him. But maybe, maybe, if we all just do this for one year, we're done with nut allergies forever. No, of course not. Of course, if you're fighting for your country and you get shot or hurt, it's a terrible tragedy. Of course, of course. <laughs> but maybe, maybe if you pick up a gun and go to another country and you get shot, it's not that weird. <laughs> maybe if you get shot by the dude you were just shooting at, it's a tiny bit your fault. Of course, of course, slavery is the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> listen, listen, you all clapped for dead kids with the nuts. For kids dying from, from nuts, you applauded. So you're in this with me now, do you understand? You don't get to cherry pick. Those kids did nothing to you. Of course, of course slavery is the worst thing that ever happened. Of course it is. Every time it's happened. Black people in America, Jews in Egypt, every time a whole race of people has been enslaved, it's a terrible, horrible thing. Of course. But maybe, maybe every incredible human achievement in history was done with slaves. Every single thing where you go, how did they build those pyramids? They just threw human death and suffering at them until they were finished. <laughs> how did we traverse the nation with a railroad so quickly? We just threw Chinese people in caves and blew them up and didn't give a shit what happened to them. There's no end to what you can do when you don't give a fuck about particular people. You can do anything. That's where human greatness comes from, is that we're shitty people, that we fuck others over. Even today, how do we have this amazing microtechnology? Because the factory where they're making these, they jump off the fucking roof because it's a nightmare in there. 
You really have a choice. You could have candles and horses and be a little kinder to each other or let someone suffer immeasurably far away just so you can leave a mean comment on YouTube while you're taking a shit. Thanks a lot, folks. You guys are great. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. It's amazing how different shit is now. And it hasn't been this way for a long time. It's been a very short time. Everybody has a phone in their pocket. It didn't used to be you had a phone. Just a few years ago, nobody had their phone. It was just the phone. It was this thing, the phone, that was in a room in your house. And then you had to dial this fucking thing. There was a rotor, and you had to turn and go... You actually hated people with zeros in their numbers because they made you do, well, this guy's got a zero and a nine. How badly do I want to talk to that piece of shit? That's too much work. Now we have this, which is amazing. We have these phones that you can call in an airstrike. You can look at the top of your own head. It's amazing, this shit, and it's wasted on the shittiest generation of piece of shit assholes that ever fucking lived. I swear to God, we are. We're the worst people so far. Because we have this beautiful thing and we hate it. We're just, you fucking do. I don't, never saw a person going, look at what my phone can do. Nobody does that. They all go, this fucking thing is sucks. I can't get it to think. Give it a second, would you? Could you give it a second? It's going to space. Can you give it a second to get back from space? Is the speed of light too slow for you, you non-contributing product sponge cunt? Can you just wait? Can you just take a little breath? Just wait for that picture of Axl Rose to get on your phone. Like it even fucking mattered what you were doing. Like it was even important. We're all just so mad. I hate my phone sucks. No, it doesn't. It's amazing. The shittiest cell phone in the world is a miracle. Your life sucks around the phone. Why are you so mad at it? People say the craziest shit. I, I hate Verizon. What are you talking about? How can that feeling exist? I hate Verizon. Why, did they fire you and take away your pension? No, just a couple of times it was weird for a second. Mm. I hate them. I hate Verizon. Well, make your own then. You go make one. Make your own network. Get some hubcaps and climb some trees. See how close yours is to perfect. Why would it be perfect? Really, it's as good as it is. Why do we expect it to be fucking perfect all the fucking time? We're not contributing. We're not helping it be perfect. We don't even know what, what is involved. Do you have any idea what is involved in taking your thing that you said that nobody needs to ever hear ever? When you go, hey, what's up, dude? And a little invisible magic angel takes it. God damn it. How, when did you send me that text? If I sent it to you a month ago, it's amazing. Whenever it gets to you, it's amazing. Whenever it gets to you in your chosen fucking font, it's incredible. No, I'm not that old, I'm 41, but I'm still amazed at the shit in my life. I'm amazed at the shit in the world. I was on a plane once, like about a month ago, and they had high-speed wireless internet on the plane. And they had never done that before. They explained to us that we were like one of the first aircraft. And I opened up my, my laptop, and I'm online. I'm looking at YouTube and shit while we're flying. And then it broke down. And the woman says, I'm sorry, but we have to fix the internet so it's down for the rest of the flight. The guy next to me goes, it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Like, dude, how does the world owe you something you didn't even know existed 30 seconds ago? <laughs> People on planes are the worst. People on planes, they complain. They get off the plane, they come to your house, and they tell you about their whole flight experience. And they make it sound like it was 
fucking a, a cattle car in Poland in the 40s. They just make it. That was the worst day of my life. I had to sit on the runway for 40 minutes. That's a story in this country. That's a fucking hardship. That you had to sit on the runway. People will listen to that story. They'll stop doing the dishes and turn around and go, oh my God, really? For 40 minutes? That's awful. You should sue them. I had to sit on the runway for 40 minutes. Oh my God, really? What happened then? Did you fly through the air like a bird? Incredibly? Did you soar into the clouds impossibly? Did you partake in the miracle of human flight? And then land softly on giant tires that you couldn't even conceive how they fucking put air in them? How dare you? Bitching about flying! I had to pay for my sandwich. You're flying! You're sitting in a chair in the sky! You're like a Greek myth right now. <laughs> but it doesn't go back very far, and I'm sort of squishing my knees. The Wright brothers would kick us all right in the cunt if they knew. <laughs> if, if you could go back in time to Orville Wright and go, hey dude, I had to sit on the runway for 40 minutes. And he'd be like, oh shit, well, let's not even bother then. <laughs> hey, Wendell, shut it down. They make you wait for a bit. That hardly seems worth it. There's always delays. That's what everybody complains about. There's always delays when I fly. Really? Delays. It's too slow. Air travel's too slow. New York to California in six hours. That used to take 30 years. <laughs> to do that and a bunch of you would die on the way there you get shot in the neck with an arrow and you go oh, and fall down and the other passengers would just bury you and put a stick there with your hat on it and keep walking and one of them would fuck your wife and have three babies and all the old people would die you'd be a whole different group of people by the time you got to california Now you watch an Adam Sandler movie and you take a big runny dump and you're there. I was, uh, I was flying about a week ago and uh, I was in the airport and I saw this really old man and he's on, he's on a wheelchair. I can fucking hear that shit, so back the fuck off. I can hear it in your headsets. Just careful. Or turn them down. Sorry to fuck up the entire show for that, but I could hear. Get closer to him. No, it's okay. It's fine. Get closer to him. You won't mind. <laughs> All right, wait a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's about where I was. <laughs> okay. That's right. I was on a, I was in the, um, I was in the airport. To just drenched right now. Totally drenched. It's like I peed. It's crazy. Okay, so I'm in the airport, and I'm going through security, and they bring this old man in a wheelchair. And he was crazy old. I mean, he was the oldest thing I've ever seen. I've been, I've been to museums and shit. This dude was... I didn't know there had been as much time as this guy was old. I mean, he was at least forever. He was at least that old. Just tiny little Nosferatu hands and eggy head. Just one of those... Ew, ew. <laughs> So frail. It was like the. It was like just the atmosphere was crushing him into a diamond. Just. <laughs> and they're pushing him through. And I'm not the only. Like he was parting the the people because people were going, "What the fuck? That's crazy!"
crazy. He's really old. And they take him through security, and you know, if you're really old or you're in a wheelchair, you can't go through the metal detector if you're in a wheelchair. So they take you to secondary clearance, which is far more stringent. Like the oldest and feeblest people get the highest scrutiny. So they take him over there, and he's, I mean, he doesn't even look good for infinity. He's not even like a, he's it, this, the whole thing going. And they take him over, and they start checking him for weapons. Like, thirdly, what do you got there, huh? Like, checking him. And they lift him, I swear to God, they picked him up gently out of the wheelchair by the shoulders, and he's standing between these two guys like this. And they're going, whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm like, really? Is that the guy, fellas? You think that's the guy? I want to maybe let him go. Let him enjoy the last 10 seconds of his life doing something else. What, what is he going to... Even if he pulled it off, he, he deserves whatever he wanted, really. What, what is he going to do? Even if he had a grenade, let him keep it. And I know what they'd say, they'd be like, well, where do you draw the line? He, this is the line. This guy right here, he's the actual line. It's very clear. <laughs> There's always somebody going through security who's like, I don't want to take off my shoes. <laughs> Stupid. I'm not a terrorist. Oh, that's right, we only make terrorists do that, I'm sorry. Anyway, so I was on a plane, I'm in first class, and a soldier gets on a plane. I see soldiers fly all the time, because that's how they get to the war. If they fly on a shitty airline, you think they get to go on a cool green plane with a red light, go, go, go! No, they just go to Delta, and they just wait in line to go to a war. And they always fly coach. I've never seen a soldier in first class in my life. It could be a full bird colonel, he's between two fat guys in coach. And they're always nice. I've never seen a soldier get on a plane like, hey, I'm in the army, fuck you, I, mean, I have a gun. They're always like, oh, yes, sir, thank, yes, thank you very much, ma'am. It's like having an extra flight attendant. They help everybody put their shit up. They're awesome. And every time that I see a soldier on a plane, I always think, you know what, I should give him my seat. It's, it, it would be the right thing to do, it would be easy to do, and it would mean a lot to him. I could, give him, I could go up to him, hey, son, I get to call him son, hey, son, go ahead and take my seat. Because I'm in first class, why? For being a professional asshole. <laughs> I'm in first class because I talk about babies with big dicks. That's what got me my seat. <laughs> this guy is giving his life for the country, he thinks, and so he, he has to sit. <laughs> but that's good enough, that's good enough. The fact that he thinks it, I'm serious. <laughs> He's fucking told by everybody in his life system that that's a great thing to do, and he's doing it. And it's scary, but he's doing it, and he's sitting in this shitty seat. And I should trade with him. I never have. Let me make that clear. I've never done it once. I've had so many opportunities. I never even really seriously came close. And here's the worst part. I still just enjoyed the fantasy for myself to enjoy. I was actually proud of myself for having thought of it. I was proud. Oh, I am such a sweet man. That is so nice of me to think of doing that and then totally never do it. I feel like America is like the, the world's worst girlfriend. America is like a terrible girlfriend to the rest of the world. Because when somebody hurts America, she remembers it forever. But if she does anything bad, it's like, it what? It did, I didn't do anything. America, why do you keep bombing those people in Yemen and all these? Well, it's because 9 11, okay? 9 11. That's, shut up, asshole. Okay, well, you killed hundreds of thousands of people, so I think, yeah, now, but 9 11. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, damn. Yeah, but you're torturing people. I did, it wasn't even torture, oh my God. He's such a baby, I didn't even do anything to him. We live in an interesting time, you know? 
Because you can be on an airplane, you're like one of 200 passengers, you're on a flight, 30,000 feet in the air in the middle of the flight, if you just decide to do this, you're sitting in your seat and you just start going like this, you go, Mwah! If you do that and don't stop doing it, they will land the plane. You can will a plane to the ground without a weapon or a threat. You don't even have to do that much. You can just sit there and just start going down. Down. Seriously, if you're on a plane, and you just didn't stop saying down. 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 Sir, is there a problem? Down. Down. Fighter jets will appear. I mean, you're going to the nearest airport. And then I guess you're in trouble, but what, they can't put you like in prison because you said down several times. They'd like, bother you. Why'd you do it? Are you a terrorist? Why'd you do it? I just, uh, just didn't want to be up anymore. Just didn't like it. I mean, I just said the word of the where I wanted to be. You didn't have to do it. It's just a suggestion. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you this story about one time that I thought I was going to die. I think it's the only time where I thought, why wouldn't this be when I die? I was on a plane. I've been on a lot of planes and a lot of shitty weather and stuff. But this shit was fucked up. I was in Indianapolis on a plane, waiting to take off. And we're sitting there, and the pilot comes on, and he says, uh, Hi folks, um, the fuel gauge is broken, so we're waiting for maintenance. So we wait. About 20 minutes. Then he comes back on. Uh, folks, the uh, fuel gauge is still broken, uh, but we're gonna go anyway. Uh, we know how much fuel we have, and we feel confident it'll be okay, so we're going to go. And I'm thinking, okay, well, he's a pilot. I'm sure he's going by some manual that says, you know, if fuel gauge breaks, call maintenance. If they're not there in 20 minutes, fuck it. <laughs> fuel gauges are overrated. Just go. You're fine. Just top it off and remember what happened. So then we still don't take off. And the guy comes back on. Uh, folks, we have another problem. Like, Guardi Airport in New York won't give us clearance to take off because the weather has been bad there intermittently. So we're going to wait for that. So we wait 20 minutes. Then he comes back on. Ah, uh, folks, LaGuardia still hasn't given us clearance. But we're going to go anyway. <laughs> we're looking at the radar. We think the weather will be fine. So what we're going to do is uh, say that our destination is Philadelphia. We'll get clearance to go there. Halfway to Philadelphia, we'll switch course to the LaGuardia Airport. We'll be happy there in a few minutes. I swear to God he said this. First of all, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be honest with the dude in the tower. Like, does the dude in the tower have to go, really, you're going to come on? Tell me where you're going. And why is he telling us this shit? I, are, am I going to have to corroborate this lie if we get pulled over by the sky police at some point in the flight? Oh, no, we're totally going to Philly. I got a brother there, and uh, we got a thing in Philly. But I'm still fine with it because we're travelers on the plane. Yeah, I got a thing. Fuck it. I'm immortal. Just go, please. Yes. Go into marginal weather with shoddy equipment secretly. I totally support this plan. So, we take off. We get above where we are right now. And it's just a black motherfucker of a cloud. It's just like the Wizard of Oz. It's just, there's trees throwing apples at us. It's crazy. It's just horrible. And we're the whole flight and we're making these circles. And me and the guy next to me are both listening to the tower. You know how you can plug into your seats sometimes? And you can listen to the tower talk to the area airplanes. And we keep, he, we keep hearing our guy trying to get clearance to land from LaGuardia. Ah, yeah. uh, this is Delta 288 uh, requesting clearance to land. And it's a negative 288. Low visibility. A few minutes go by. 
Delta 288, we would really like clearance to land. Yeah, that's a negative 288. Like he was getting annoyed. And meanwhile, we're just circling and burning this vague amount of fuel. <laughs> we could just stop being an airplane at any second. And then we hear this. This is all true. This, the LaGuardia guy comes. It's LaGuardia Airport to all area airplanes. We are closed for the night. Zero visibility. Not safe for landing. Please divert to Philadelphia or Allentown, Pennsylvania or Boston. And then we hear our guy. This is still the we need. We need to land now. We have no fuel. We have no fuel. We have to land right now. Interesting. Then there's a pause, and then we hear this. Well, then clear to land, then I'm 280. Uh. That's how he said it. Like, dude, uh, <laughs> no one can see, okay? But just, I, I guess all the dumb decisions you made today have made this a good one. Just take a shot. I'm going home. Just fucking turn the lights off after you crash. I don't give a shit, frankly. By the way, you're not supposed to be here, you fucking liar. You said you were going to Philly. So as soon as we get clearance, we just... Like we start bulleting. We're either flying desperately towards the ground or falling. I don't know that there's a difference. We come out of the clouds and there's the fucking earth right fucking there. It's right there. That's what low visibility means. We come out of the clouds. No fuck, it's right there, Jesus. And the plane just. And you can feel the plane go, oh, fuck, I can't do that. What are you, nuts? And we go and veer over the highway. And I swear to God, I saw people in their cars go, what the fuck? And we hit the runway like sideways. Like, and the pilot comes back on, all true, I swear to God. He's totally out of breath. He's like, Welcome to LaGuardia Airport, <laughs> New York City. <laughs> you may turn on your cell phones now, and you may call your loved ones. He said that. He said you may call your loved ones. And everybody on the plane was crying and rocking back and forth, just sobbing calling their husbands and their wives. I'm divorced, what am I gonna, hi, remember you hate me? Well, I almost died. And I got in a cab, and the cab driver goes, that was a very bad landing. I was like, how'd you know that was me? He's like, that's the only plane to land in four hours. We all watched the drivers, we said they're going to die. And I go, so I go to Walgreens and they're selling, you know, I'm going to the back of the pharmacy too. And the pharmacy is the most depressing place in the world. People in Walgreens are just milling around in flip flops and hitting their kids in the toy aisle, like beating their kids in front of toys. <laughs> and then they go and buy medication and they don't have insurance. They think they have insurance and they way don't. And every moment, it, it's like a hidden camera joke on all these people, it happens, it breaks my heart. They come up, they have a prescription. They're really happy because there's a solution to their problem in their hands. The doctor said, take that, you'll, you'll be fine. So they give it to the pharmacist and he goes, yeah, it's gonna be $40,000 for that. And the guy's like, what? But I have insurance. Now we called, they said, fuck you, no. And then the, then the guy always gives them like, chewed up gum with hair in it and says, take this, this is what you get. This is your, 
And, and they always ask, is this as good as the other one? <laughs> Fucking no, of course not. The other shit would have cured you completely. And we got shitloads of it too. But none for you, you poor faggot. Go home and die. It's hard for old people. Well, I don't, my grandmother's 95. She can't see out of her left eye. It just shut off. The last time we went to see her, she's like, I can't see out of my left eye. And we're all like, oh, hey, what was Christmas like in the 40s? <laughs> Maybe run out the clock on the eye thing if we're lucky, you know? <laughs> so I go to her doctor. He's right at the end of the hall. He's there always, like, 90 feet away from her. So I go to the doctor and I said, you know, she can't see out of her left eye at all. And I swear to God, he goes, well, she's probably got a bunch of tumors in her head. <laughs> I swear to God. That's exactly what he said. I remember it because I was blown away by how none of his education he applied to this particular diagnosis. He said that she's probably got a bunch of tumors in her head. He's a doctor and he called it her head. He almost said fucking head. I swear to God, like that's what he was thinking. She's probably got a bunch of tumors in her fucking head. Who oh, gives a shit? That old cunt will be dead in a week. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get up from my desk. Because of her eye. What, does she need two eyes to see the shitty place you fucking put her because you don't love her enough? <laughs> My grandma, uh, grandmother, she, just for the, for the layman. <laughs> My grandmother, um, she gave her body to a medical school. Uh, so for it to just be examined and, and dissected, which is a good thought for that, but you know, they're her survivors, or her family. That was a person. That was my grandmother. She used to wear glasses and say things. <laughs> and now she's just shaved head on a metal table with a hungover medical student trying to dig out her pancreas. And he gets an F. Imagine being the body where the kid got an F on you. The teacher's like, no, you idiot. And he writes F on her tit with a Sharpie and just throws her down a chute on a pile of F body. <laughs> That's what we sound like now. <laughs> just the whole country, we're like fat eighth graders, all of us. Just, <laughs> just the You ever listen to people? When I was in England, I went into this cafe full of uh, Afghani people, and they just had crackly energy to their language. I don't know what they're saying, but it was like, there's energy. We don't have that anymore. Because we ever listen to people, you ever listen to what people really sound like? The other day I was in some whatever coffee place. I don't know, you can only be in six places, whichever one I was in. And I'm listening to just fat white people talk to each other. These two fat white guys behind me, one, one was like, and his friend's like, I know, I told you, I Obama. These two women are talking, and I was like, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Stephanie. Anyway, I was listening to the two guys. And one of them used a word that really pissed me off because it was how he used it. He used the word hilarious. That's one of those words that we use that we don't, get, we don't care what it means. We go right for the top shelf with our words now. We don't think about how we talk. We just say the right to the fucking just, dude, it was amazing. It was amazing. Really? You were amazed? You were amazed by a basket of chicken wings? Really? Amazing. What are you gonna, what are you gonna do with the rest of your life now? What if something really happens to you? What if Jesus comes down from the sky and 
makes love to you all night long and leaves the new living lord in your belly. What are you gonna call that? You used amazing on a basket of chicken wings. You've limited yourself verbally to a shit life. All these words we use, genius, that's, you can, anybody can be a genius now. It used to be, you had to have a thought, no one ever had it before. Or you had to invent a number. Now, it's like, hey, I got a cup in case we need another cup. Dude, you're a genius. So these guys, they use hilarious. And I remember the context exactly, because I had the hate recorder running in the back of my head. I was just standing there fucking angry. I'm listening to him. The one guy says to the other guy, he goes, uh, hey dude, so, uh, so guess who I saw today? And his friend goes, Ooh. I swear to God, that's how he said it. It just slid out. Just, Ooh. I'm like, tighten your lips up, man. Make an effort, please. Ooh, that's how a person talks. This guy, he's just secreting words out of the front of his head. <laughs> so his friend goes, I saw Lisa today. And he goes, that's hilarious. How the fuck is that hilarious? That you saw Lisa. Is Lisa a poodle on her hind legs? How is that hilarious? Was she standing next to Jerry Lewis when he was younger? How the fuck is that hilarious? Do you know what hilarious means? Hilarious means so funny that you almost went insane when you heard that. It's just so funny that it almost ruined your life. You're homeless now because you can't cope or reason anymore because that hilarious thing just shattered your mind and three months later you got shit and leaves in your hair and you're drenched in pee in the gutter that's how funny hilarious is i don't know this lisa cunt but she ain't that funny there's just no way she's that funny on sight fuck her seriously i hope she's dead i really do i hate her i hope she died today weirdly and horribly I hope the person she loved most pushed her off a cliff and she was just falling and screaming the whole way down, never accepting it. And then Superman swooped her up and then dropped her from higher. I seriously hope that happened to stupid Lisa with her one tit bigger than the other and her fucking frizzy hair and her big nose <laughs> fucking Jew <laughs> what am I doing <laughs> lost my mind <laughs> Jew is a funny word because it is because, because Jew is the only word that is the is the polite thing to call a group of people and the slur for the same group most groups have a good and a bad, there is the same word just with a little stank on it and it becomes a terrible thing to call the person. Cause you can say he's a Jew, it's fine. He's a Jew, like that's all it takes. I wish the president would slip one into a speech that's just on the border, just to fuck with people's heads. Just in the middle, you know. We all gotta get along in this country. We need everybody. Blacks and whites and Christians and Jews. And let's just try to... Mm. Um, can't call him on it, but that seemed inappropriate. <laughs> Fucking Lisa. Fucking Lisa, man. It's just, they didn't deserve that. The story didn't deserve, here's what he should have said. This is what that story deserved. It should have been like, I saw Lisa today. The other guy should have said, that happened. That's it, that's all it deserved. He should have said, that happened. And then he just should have started making out. I don't know why I wanted that. I just wanted these two old fat guys to start blowing each other on the floor. And not even gay blowing, just awkward heterosexual sucking that they don't know what they're doing. And they don't even get hard part way through. They're just sucking each other's soft penises. 
and they're both crying because they're embarrassed and confused. Now that would be hilarious. Then you would have a story that you could call hilarious without being accused of hyperbole. <laughs> it's amazing the stories that people think are interesting. And that's always one of them, is when your friend ran into somebody from their past and they can't wait to tell you. And first they want to tell you for 40 minutes how blown away you're going to be that they saw this person. Dude, you're not going to believe who I saw today. Yes, I am. Of course I am. Don't even tell me. I don't care. No, no, dude. Dude. When you find out, holy shit. When you find out who I saw, you are going to shit in your father's mouth when I tell you. I'm serious. When I tell you who I saw, you are going to kill, fuck, and eat four Mexican retarded kids when I tell you who I saw today. I'm, you're going to do that. I'm serious that you're going to do that. You're not going to, you're just going to rip out your asshole and throw it on the wall. It's going to stick there and you're going to dive through it into another dimension. <laughs> I tell you who I saw today. And I've wasted a lot of time just being angry at people I don't know. You know, it's amazing how nasty we can get as people, depending on the situation. Like, most people are okay, as long as they're okay. But if you put people in certain contexts, they just change. Like, when I'm in my car, I have a different set of values. I am the worst person I can be when I'm behind the wheel, which is when I'm at my most dangerous. When you're driving, that's when you need to be the most compassionate and responsible of any other time in your life, because you are fucking driving a weapon amongst weapons. And yet it's the worst people get. And I'm, I am the worst. One time I was driving and there was a guy ahead of me and he kind of, I don't know, he sort of drifted into my lane for a second. And this came out of my mouth. I said, worthless piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, what an indictment. What kind of way is that to feel about another human being? Worthless piece of shit. That's somebody's son. And things I've said to other people. I was at once driving, some guy in a pickup truck did, I don't know, remember even. And I yelled out my window. I, I said, hey, fuck you. Where outside of a car is that even nearly okay? <laughs> if you were in an elevator and you were like right next to a person's body and whatever, like he leaned into you a little bit, would you ever turn right to their face and go, hey, fuck you? Worthless piece of shit. No. Literally zero people would ever do that. But put a couple of pieces of glass and some road between you, there's nothing you would not say to them. I hope you die. I said that to a person. I hope you die. Why? Because you made me go like this for half a second of my life. You tested my reflexes and it worked out fine! <laughs> so now I hope your kids grow up motherless! <laughs> I mean, what am I capable of? <laughs> I just don't look at a woman as a pair of tits anymore, and I wish I did, because I could get ladies here, because that's what it takes, is just to go, you're <laughs> But I can't now, like I went to a club, I went to a club, you know, a boom, 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 like a club. And I'm standing there looking at all the people, and there's the women, the hot chicks, the hot girl at the bar. You know, when you see them, that's just, she's a hot girl at the bar. She's got the, got the shirt and the skirt and the boots, those three lines. There's like some perfect ratio that they hit with those three lines. And you, 
And they're all standing there like that. And I used to look at somebody like that and I'm like, wow, she's an angel. What could I ever say to make her like me? Now I look at her and I'm like, what is that? Is that even a person? What the fuck kind of person is that? Is that an identity even? Who would want to be that? I have two daughters. I pray they don't grow up to be the, eh, eh, the hot girl at the bar. What kind of, hey, what do you do? People want to fuck me. Really? That's it? I go to this club and they want to fuck me over here. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> and their male counterparts are even more useless. The guys, the dudes, the going out to get laid dudes. You know those guys that walk in packs of nine down the bar street? The going out to get laid guys. They all got the same button up stripey going out to get laid shirt on. They all got the same stride as one short guy behind them. Like... <laughs> and they, they're all out to get, like, who's going to fuck all nine of you? What is the fantasy here? Are you going to see nine women in the same configuration and just all... Are you all going to walk into a giant vagina somewhere? <laughs> And then later they're in front of a pizza place just angry at each other. You said there was pussy there, you idiot! Shut up! And they beat up a stranger, get the energy out that way. Faggot! Those are the most dangerous people, are dudes that didn't get laid. And they're just fucking... <laughs> just full of cum coming out of their eyes. Fuck somebody. That's my favorite dumb guy gesture, yeah. You right. I always wonder, what if there was a guy who whenever he does this, he has to finish? Like just some guy who works in your office. You ask him a question, hey, is Bill in yet? Yeah, like he's ever on time. Seriously, that dude's always late, man. I'm serious. I don't know why. <laughs> it's always an odd moment in a guy's life. The second after you come and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> reality comes rushing back. Because you've been pushing reality away in pieces all night to get the, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> No, I'll just leave my car there. It doesn't matter. I'll just go. No, no, it doesn't matter. This is weird, but I'm drunk. Oh, fuck. And then you're just like... You're like the Hulk coming back down to the other guy. My clothes are ripped and there's a dead guy here. I don't know what happened. I'm to get my duffel bag and leave town again. I was with a girl, I was like 20 years old, I was already doing stand-up, and I did a show in Washington, D.C., and after the show, one of the waitresses came back to my hotel, she was really cute, and we're making out in my hotel, and uh, she's into it, she's like humping me, so I start putting my hand up her shirt, and she stops me, I'm like, oh, okay, so then we're making out more, and I start putting my hand on her ass, and she stops me, so after a while, she went home, nothing happened, and then the next night, I saw her at the club, and she goes, uh, hey, what happened last night? I was like, what? She goes, how come we didn't have sex? I was like, because you didn't want to. She's like, yes, I did. I was really into it. I was like, well, why did you keep stopping me? And she goes, because I wanted you to just go for it. I was like, what does that mean? She says, I'm kind of weird. I get turned on when a guy just gets frustrated and just holds me down and fucks me. Like, that's a big turn on for me. 
I was like, well, you should have told me. I would have happily done that for you. And she says, no, it has to feel real and dangerous. I'm like, what are you out of your fucking mind? You think I'm just gonna rape you on the off chance that hopefully you're into that shit? an idiot. I'm getting kind of a rapey vibe from this girl. I don't know. I suspect she might enjoy being raped. Maybe that's her thing. I don't want to ask for us to ruin it, so I'm... just take a shot and rape her. What the hell? What's the worst that could happen after all? Jesus. And music, it, like everything is, is, like every musician is attractive. Isn't that a weird coincidence? that everyone who can play music also looks good. I would have thought there'd be like one ugly guy with a guitar who would be amazing, but fucking zero. <laughs> and there's like, like teen pop idols who are children. And they're on TV like going, mm, mm. <laughs> it's a kid. And folks are jacking off to them. <laughs> folks, <laughs> just folks are jacking off. Well, folks are jacking off to the girls on TV. <laughs> Some of them are really young. I, I can't think of, I don't know their names. I don't have that knowledge anymore. I'm too old. Britney Spears is like, when I think of a teen idol, is Britney Spears. That's hold up, because she's my age now. That's how long ago that was. She caught up to me. When I was 35, she was 18, and now we're both 44 years old. So that's how, that's how little I know about who these people are. I mean, most people, when they have sex, there's nobody even there. It's, it's just porn now. That's all we do, is jack off to porn. That's the whole country's sex life. And porn is a really weird, indi it's, a, it's an indication of how fucked up this country's gotten because there's no bigger waste in the whole world. When you think about how much work porn is and what America gets out of it. Because we're in a challenging time when we really, we want to all kind of do, you know, like in World War II when they collected fucking cotton and steel and shit and sent it to the troops with an envelope. We're not doing anything. We're, porn is a huge, it's a huge amount of work, first of all. I don't know if you really appreciate how much work pornography really is. It's really fucking hard. Those people don't just fuck and just go high film it. They really work. They work harder than any people I've ever seen do anything. I mean, a dude in a porn is like, for 40 minutes, he's like, Ugh. And the women aren't just being fucked. They're like, oh! 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 Hard work gets packaged and distributed and marketed by an army of professional, talented people. And what does America get out of it? Just one fat guy in the dark going and falling asleep on a pizza. It's such a waste when you consider that if you could put the porn people to work doing anything else. There's nothing they couldn't accomplish. But nobody wants it. If only guys got off sexually on watching a bunch of people build a school in, in Malawi or oh, fucking giving those kids a chance. Oh, that's fucking hot. I don't care where I am. I really don't give a shit. I'm not interested in where I am ever. I've been doing this for eight, 25 years. I don't even know how long anymore. I'm not impressed by the place. Like, I was in Chicago. Every time you go, I go to a city now, everybody's like, oh, you gotta get the, the... No, I don't. I don't have to get anything. I don't care. The two most boring things in the world to me are civic pride and civic rivalry. I'm from Boston. That's a very divisive city. Somebody always goes, woo! 
boo, and then somebody else goes boo, and I really want them both to just fuck themselves and die. Because those are both stupid impulses. I'm from Boston, I'm not proud of it. Everything bad happened to me there. That's where I squirted diarrhea in my underwear in gym class. Boston, why would I? And if you're gonna boo a city, if you're gonna raise your voice and say boo at a performance because a city was mentioned, you better have a really good personal reason. Like the whole city of Boston raped your mom, the entire city. Every citizen just, they made her comfortable and they just raped her for months. It took so long to organize. It was like a coat drive, it just went on and everybody, Got a thing in the mail, I gotta rape that lady in a month, I gotta get off work and... Men, women, old ladies, why do I have to do this? <laughs> Newborn baby girls, they just fucking fuck your mind. If that, if it gets that bad... You can go ahead and boo Boston, I understand. And even then, that's a pretty weak response to the mass raping of your mom by an entire city. You're just gonna go, boo. Why'd you boo? It's not a fan, I don't like it. Because the Red Sox, now nah, they raped my mom, they all did. Boo. I mean, everything that we introduce to the world is shitty meaning white people, because I really think that white people are from like another planet. Because we, like when we came to America, it was so nice. It was just Indians, and they weren't even Indians. We called them that by accident, and we still call them that. Like we knew in a month that it wasn't Indians, but we just don't give a shit. We never correct it. We came here, they're like, hi. And we're like, hey, you're Indians, right? And they're like, no. No, this is India, right? No, it's not, it's a total, totally other place. You're not Indians? No. Ah, you're Indians. <laughs> you're Indians for hundreds of years after. We ruined everything here. This was the great, it was just coast to coast, just green and brown and beautiful. And, and all the humans were just walking around with painted faces, just walking. And they'd be like, ooh, that looks yummy. And then they'd just eat from the ground. And then they'd sleep on the grass. And they'd wake up and they'd fuck. And then they'd go for a swim and do a little dance. That was the whole continent was just folks doing that. I mean, there was people in Mexico cutting off kids' heads and rolling them down the pyramid stairs. But that's, I mean, that's, that's gonna, that's always going on. What are you gonna, you know, you can't, yes, you can't, you can't do a whole lot about that. But I think we came from another planet, and the reason is because we don't like it here. I mean, why, if we're from here, if we belong on Earth, why aren't we comfortable on earth at all. We need nice smooth surfaces and right angles and we need it to be cool and not too hot, just a little tip, 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 just perfect. Like why wouldn't, when it's hot, why wouldn't we just, yeah, fuck it. Why wouldn't we be like that if we belong here? And it's weird because people, people that are, uh, whatever you call the, you know, there's environmentalists and then there's people who are whatever, they just, I hate environmentalists. But that's what people get angry at environmentalists because they think it's they're slowing down the economy and creating restrictions. And a lot of these people are Christian. A lot of these people are very devout Christians. And that's such a confusing thing to me that if you believe that God gave you the earth, that God created the earth for you, why would you not be have to look after it? Why the fuck? Why would you not think that when he came back, he wouldn't go, what the fuck did you do? I gave this to you, motherfucker. Are you crazy? The polar bears are brown. What did you, what did you do to the polar bears?
polar bears. Did you shit all over every polar bear? What did you, who did this? Who spilled this shit? Who spilled this? Come over, did you fucking spill this? What is that? It's oil, it's just some oil. I didn't mean to spill. Well, why did you take it out of the fucking ground? Because it wanted to go faster. I don't, well, I'm, not, it's not, I'm not fast enough. And I was cold. What the fuck do you mean cold? I gave you everything you needed, you piece of shit. Well, because jobs. I wanted, what is a job? What is, explain to me, what's a fucking job? You will go, like, you work at a place and when people call when they, their game doesn't work and you help them figure it out. <laughs> what do you do that for? For money. What do you need money for? Food. Just eat the shit on the floor. <laughs> I left shit all over the floor. <laughs> Fucking corn and wheat and shit. Grab it up, make some bread. What are you doing? Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't have, like, bacon around it and, like... <laughs> I like when it has like, like bacon on it and br 